I'm a black woman. In fact, I'm a dark-skinned black woman. I have never had a sunburn. Don't know what that feels like. But I believe when people tell me it is really painful. For example, my friend April. On this day, she did not wear her sunscreen, and she suffered. She told me it hurt a lot. Now, I'm not going to tell her, stop complaining, it's not an issue, not a big deal. Because I don't live in her skin, and she doesn't live in mine. To truly understand each other, we have to pay attention, we need to listen, we have to try and empathize, and it is only when I believe what she tells me about her experience of being white in the sun that I am coming closer to understanding her. So, when people say, race is not an issue, stop complaining, get over it, it bothers me. It bothers me because if you're not in this skin, you will not truly understand my experience and my journey. Last summer, my brother, sister, and I thought we would take a drive. And as we drove, we decided to stop at the beach to enjoy a walk. We just stopped our car, got out of the car, and just really had a good time. We weren't caring about the blazing midday sun. We didn't stop to apply sunscreen lotion. In fact, we didn't stop to purchase it in the first place. We just went for a walk, free of any burden. We were privileged. Our skin gave us privilege. So when white people say that they don't feel particularly privileged, I understand that perhaps in the context of education or wealth, they're not all privileged. But in the context of whiteness and blackness in this society, there is a privilege that should be acknowledged. It is a privilege that has been built on one racial identity being constructed and protected for hundreds of years. The past is still present. White people once owned black people, not far from where I'm standing right now. That negative ripple of history caused by slavery is today still just as readily present and felt as the positive impact of history caused by the First Amendment to the Constitution. So I'm asking you to really see color. See this skin, because if you don't, you will default to the position of privilege, which in this country comes with being white. You see this deep, dark chocolate skin? It is a reflection of a proud, deep history rooted in West Africa and the West Indies. Please see it. I need to see color to realize that sunburns exist. This skin is beautifully chocolate, but I know it is still a signifier of something that is deeply feared and misunderstood around this country and around the world. See it. I need to see that white skin painfully reddened to understand that I have privilege in that context. Here's my friend Jamie. I know. <laughs> Jamie bought the sunscreen that you spray on. <laughs> and apparently, for it to be effective, you have to rub it in. <laughs> Jamie didn't do so. He suffered, complained. Now, I will not tell Jamie, this is an isolated case, it just happened one time, be quiet, let's go, suck it up. And yet people ask me all the time, well, really, how many times have you been called the N-word? Five times? Maybe 10? That doesn't sound like a lot. But please don't dismiss the pain of each of those times. I won't tell Jamie that his sunscreen disaster was just one time, so be quiet and let's keep, keep going. Because one time is one time too many. Here's my friend Mary Beth. I know, I have a lot of white friends. <laughs> I know. On this day, we were going downstairs to have lunch 
in the sun. And she had me wait 10 minutes while she ran back upstairs, grabbed her hat, and rubbed in her sunscreen. Once she was done, we went out, both had a great time. Do both these lives matter? Of course they do. But in this context, one life mattered just a little bit more. It was worth my time to make sure she was protected. So, when black people say black lives matter, please understand, it doesn't mean that other lives don't matter. It only means that in the context of 2016 in the United States, that black lives matter just a little bit more, and it is worth our time to make sure that those lives are protected. Because the truth is, that invisible deodorant that we all buy at the store shows up very visibly on my skin. The truth is, I have to rely on my white friend to book us into an Airbnb so we can both enjoy a family vacation. The truth is, a mortgage bank lender was recently fired from her job for a tweet in which she called Michelle Obama an ugly black bitch, causing us to wonder how many black people had applied for mortgages that she had turned down. The truth is, my teenage son must not walk down the street in our white neighborhood at night while wearing a hoodie. And the truth is, my heartbeats are suspended every time my dark-skinned husband reaches for his wallet to show the police officer his driver's license. That's the reality. In 2015, unarmed black folk were five times more likely to be stopped, shot, and killed by the police than unarmed white folk. So we must assert that black lives matter. Again, it's not saying that other lives don't matter, it's just saying that in this context, in 2016 in the United States, those lives are worth protecting. We must pay attention. And if you truly believe that all lives matter, then how can you turn away from this reality? As my three friends, April, Jamie, and Mary Beth, get ready to go out into the sun, they have shelves upon shelves of sunscreen that they can choose from. You all know what I'm talking about, right? The other day I was at Walgreens and I decided to go down the sunscreen aisle. I never go that way, don't need to, but I went and I found all these different products. I found SPF 5, SPF 50, SPF 60, there was probably SPF 60.2. There were clothing, there were toners, there were uh, sprays, there were bronzers. There are so many choices for white people to protect themselves from the sun. So many that I thought I would call this talk SPF WTF. <laughs> because really, WTF. I don't understand it. I've never had to use any of these products. But I'm not going to ask the Walgreens manager to pay attention. This is special treatment for a special group of, of people. It's unfair. Yet people say all the time, black people don't need special treatment. They don't need a special black culture center. We don't need black studies departments. We don't need special laws to make sure that they get equal access. If this uh, Walgreens manager got rid of this entire set of, of, of sunscreen lotions, a lot of people would suffer. Likewise, if we dismiss all the laws and all the attention given to people of color, black people, and other marginalized groups to make sure that they get equal access, we suffer. So, also, if Mary Beth asks me to get her SPF 50 and I get her SPF 5, I have not helped her. So we have to be really intentional, really careful in the ways in which we solve these problems. And we're not saying that anybody should lose their privilege. I'm only asking a question. Is there a way that we can all get the same privilege so we can all enjoy the same sun? As an ethnomusicologist, I really deeply enjoy 
the study of music. I'm interested in the connections between music and politics, music and race, music and history. So I love knowing how Dr. Martin Luther King affected music. In 1963, he spoke of a dream in which he thought it would be great to have a, a country, a nation, a world where his children would be judged not on the color of their skin, but on the content of their character. Notice here he's talking about judgment, not acknowledgement. Three years later, in 66, Stevie Wonder sang a song called A Place in the Sun, which referenced that same dream. I love knowing that little Stevie actually didn't write that song. It was written by two white men, Brian Wells and Ronald Miller. Those two men reached across into the black community. They listened, they paid attention, they empathized, and they crafted this song. That's how we do it. That's how we come together, in our different skins, from our different positions of poverty, privilege, pain, this is how we transcend racial politics in 2016. And this is how a young, blind black boy in Detroit in the 1960s took a song written by two white men and sang these lyrics. There is a place in the sun where there is hope for everyone. Thank you. Thank you.